Ladies and gents, welcome to Zantu Media Channel. A single image that says so much. The black man is Patrick Hutchinson, personal trainer, grandfather, and it's been said, British hero. Patrick doesn't know the man he saved from a kicking, or worse, but he knew he had to act. His life was under, under threat, so I just went under, scooped him up, put him on my shoulders and, and uh, sort of started marching towards the police with him. Because it sounds like it was a very a uh, scary moment. Yeah, it was. You don't think about that though at the time. You just sort of do what you've got to do. Patrick and his friends are security and martial arts experts. They say they went to yesterday's anti-racist gathering in central London to try and keep the peace. On the way home, far-right groups began to clash with black youths. The man Patrick saved had been caught alone, left by his friends. It was about to get really nasty. It would have turned out really bad because Someone's life would have been taken and you know what would have happened straight away. Black guy, black boys have killed somebody and they've killed a white man. You know, it's just going to be worse. So we had to go out there. I couldn't sleep. For me, I wasn't protecting him. I was protecting our kids. I was protecting their future because I know the judge would not have saw what happened before. But, but, the, but the fact is you did end up saving somebody's life. 100%. But again, I, I was saving our kids' future. We couldn't just stay there and stay at home and just not do nothing, you know what I mean? So we came, we came down and then we did what we had to do, you know? We came and protected, protected, protected our people. We were there to, do, to serve a purpose. We saw it sort of escalating, um, myself, Jay, um, Lee and Pierre were sort of trying to get around the guy to try and stop it from happening. Um, Patrick came straight in, as he said, assess his um, situation straight away, picked him up and we just tried to do what we could to get him back to the, hand him back to the safest place that he could go. The friends handed him over to police. There have now been over a hundred arrests, including a man who handed himself in, in connection with urinating on one of the memorials the far-right protesters said they'd gathered to defend. And let us not forget why so many people have been taking to the streets. This is a nation being forced to address hundreds of years of racial injustice, brought to the fore by the murder of an African-American, George Floyd. If the... Uh... The other three police officers that were standing around when George Floyd was, um, you know, murdered, um, had thought about, you know, intervening and stopping their uh, their colleague from doing what he was doing, like what we did. Um, you know, George, you know, George Floyd would be alive today still. Black Lives Matter has become a global awakening. Everyday racism has, for so long, not been talked about, not discussed. But it is something this government, accused of racist immigration policies and failing to protect black and minority ethnic groups during COVID, claims it understands. I think there's been enormous progress that our country and our society has made. If I think back to the time when my grandparents first arrived, when I was growing up, yes, I do think uh, things have changed enormously for the better because of uh, how we've all evolved as a society. That doesn't mean a small minority still hold beliefs that I find abhorrent, and all of us collectively share that. Actions, though, speak louder than words. And yesterday, Patrick Hutchinson and his friends walked the walk. I just want equality. You know, equality 
for you know all of us. You know, at the moment the scales are unfairly balanced, and I just want things to be, you know, fair. You know, for my children and my grandchildren. You know. Well, earlier I spoke to the Labour MP, Florence Eshalomi, and I began by asking her what she thought about the government's consideration of 10-year jail sentences for people who desecrate war memorials. I think what we've got to be clear on is the fact that any acts of violence and the violence that we saw on the streets yesterday will not be tolerated. And I fully support the Metropolitan Police in asking the government to review this. This whole issue of statues and memorials has become a very sort of emotive subject. Do you personally think that the statue of Churchill should come down? Is it right to be there? Was he racist? This, again, this whole issue around the focus on statues, I think it's detracting from the main issue of what everyone has been on the streets, on social media, writing to me and other MPs about over the last two and a half weeks. It's about people demanding a big open conversation about some of the structural inequality and racism that unfortunately still exists in our society. Just, just to come back to that specific question, do you think Churchill was a racist? This isn't about whether Churchill was a racist or not. This is about, I want to see our national curriculum reflecting the historical things that happened in Britain. So that discussion coupled in with the role that Churchill played during the war, you know, he's rightly held as a national hero, as a treasure because of his um, status in the war. But I want us to talk about other histories, the real British history. And as a national hero, you'd be happy for that statue to stay? I don't think this is about the statue. I'd want to see more statues going up. I think it's quite a shame that we don't have statutes of more prominent black Britons in the UK. So I beamed with pride when I saw the statue of Mary Seacole going up outside St. Thomas's Hospital. We need to see more statues of black Britons who've contributed so much to our country going up. There was a really striking image this weekend of uh, Patrick Hutchinson, a black guy carrying a white protester to safety on his shoulders. We spoke to Patrick and he said that he wanted equality for all of us. He wants things to be fair for his children and his grandchildren. I just wonder what your view of that image was. I think it was such a powerful image. And I think it goes to show that this issue is not just a black issue. We need our white allies. We need everybody talking about this issue. Everyone saw what happened to George Floyd. People were moved. People who'd never been out on marches before were moved. So it's about using that energy, using that frustration to make sure that in weeks to come, we don't forget the hashtags. We don't forget the marches. We don't forget the people who've been out on the streets, but we actually see concrete proposals coming forward from our government on how they're going to address this.